Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it's time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired me this week, and find out how you can go see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or new to Inspired Saturdays, let me tell you a little bit about it before I get started. I like to stop by most Saturdays and team up with another crafty YouTuber to be inspired by each other. Today, you'll see me create something that is based upon another artist's creation, and then at the top of my description box below is the link that you can go see what she has created inspired by something I made. This week, I am teaming up with Marla of Mad About Cards and Crafts. All of her social media links will be in the description box below, so make sure you check out her YouTube channel and her Instagram account. Up on screen here is the picture that drew my eye on Instagram, and I decided that this is what was going to inspire me this week. I really like the stenciled background on both cards, and then if you look closer at the card on the left, you'll see there's some vellum there. And you know I love vellum if you've been around my channel very long. So today I'm going to be stenciling in my background because I have all the stuff and don't do it enough and I'm going to be using some vellum. Don't forget that when you're done with my video today that you check out what Marla has created. Her link is at the top of that description box below. Make sure to go over there, watch her video, leave her some love, and subscribe if you are so inspired. Most of the products that I'll be using in today's card are in front of me here, and I'll talk about those here in just a second, but if I add anything later, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover, and as always, if I leave you with any questions, leave those in that comment section, and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my inks today, I chose some ink cubes from Gina K Designs, and I'm doing kind of an alternative rainbow color. I chose more of a pastel -y for each of the colors in the rainbow. I'll tell you later in the voiceover what colors these are exactly. I will be using the Inkblot Shop and Hero Arts collaboration set for my main image, and this one is called Please Deliver To. I just love these colored pencils right there. For my sentiment, I'm using this set from Tailored Expressions, and I'm going to be using You Color My World, and the name of the set is Color My World. A few months ago, I bought some stencil packages from Amazon. I think I got 10 or 12 at a time, and I chose one of those to use for today. I will be stamping my image on and doing my coloring on Strathmore Bristol Smooth. I find that this is going to work best for the techniques that I'll use today. And then I also got out a couple dies from my stash. I have a stitch circle and a scallop circle. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be doing the stenciling, and I will be holding my stencil in place with a couple pieces of scotch blue removable tape. I just get my stencil where I want it, and then flip that over and place a piece of tape on either side of it. Later, when I go to take this off, it won't ruin the cardstock in any way. To protect my work surface, I put down a cutting mat from the Dollar Tree, and you'll notice from the Dollar Tree also, I am using their makeup brushes as blender brushes. I do have one brush for each kind of color family, and I mark those with a little piece of washi tape there on the neck. I will be blending in a diagonal starting with Dusty Rose. I get a little ink on my brush, and then I just put some of that in the top left corner. Once I think I have a good amount on there, I'm going to switch brushes and switch inks. Next up is Sweet Mango, and I just do a line of this, coming usually in from the sides. Once I have that on there, I bring back in my pink brush and kind of blend those out. I do make sure that each time I put the brush I just used all the way to the right, so I don't mix up my inks. 
Now I continued this same process and everything worked great until I got to the purple that I was going to use. And I originally was gonna use Lovely Lavender and for some reason, I could not get ink to come off this pad. It came out kind of brown on my cardstock when I did get something there, and I put my finger in the ink and it came out purple. I put some ink on the mat, it was purple. I put some ink straight on a piece of cardstock and it was purple, but nothing worked. Let me know below if you've ever had this happen, and if so, what did you do? I ended up just bringing in lovely lilac, and with a very light hand, or at least I try to be light, I use that for my purple. Now the other colors that I used for the yellow was lemon drop, green was jelly bean green, and for my blue it was ocean mist. Once all of the colors were down, it was then time for the big reveal. I just love this part of stenciling. Next I did the stamping. I will be stamping my image and my sentiment with Versamark ink and I got out some detail black and detail white embossing powder. The first thing I'm going to do is stamp those pencils from the collaboration set and I just put those kind of across the center of my scrap of Bristol Smooth. Once that was in place I picked it up with the door of my Misty and then I inked it up very well with that Versamark. And I also remembered, of course, to use my embossing buddy so that powder sticks only to where I want it. Once I had it stamped, I brought in my tidy tray, poured my black embossing powder over it, and it actually did have a little bit of powder where I didn't want it, so I just brought in a dry brush and wiped that off. Then it was time to bring in my heat tool and heat set that powder. To be prepared for my next powder, which is white, I did put all of the black powder back into the container with the hole on that tidy tray. Now it's time to stamp the sentiment. Because this is a red rubber stamp, I do take the mouse pad out of my Misty and I will be stamping this twice on black cardstock. I set up my stamp where I want it, ink it up, stamp it, and then I rotate that piece of cardstock and ink it up and stamp it again. Once again, I do make sure to use that embossing buddy to help my powder stick to where I want it. Now I'm gonna bring in my white detail embossing powder and I pour that over both of the sentiments. But I actually want my sentiment to be in two pieces. So I brought back in that dry brush and I wiped off half of the sentiment from each of the times that I stamped it. Once again, when that was all ready to go, I brought in my heat tool and heat set that powder. Off camera, I did some die cutting. I used just that stitch circle for my pencil image and then a scallop circle on a piece of vellum. To color my image today, I'm gonna to be doing kind of a watercolor technique using the same Gina K ink cubes. I'll be using my Arteza water brush pen, and for my palette, I got out a scrap of clear cardstock. I'm gonna get started by smushing some of that dusty rose ink onto the clear cardstock, and then put a little water in it with that water brush. Then when I bring it over to my image, I'm gonna start coloring each pencil from top to bottom, left to right. That way, the darkest part of my color will be on the left side of each pencil. To make sure the lead is the same color as the pencil, once I have the barrel colored in, I go back and grab the dark color and color in the little piece of lead. I also went and added a little bit more of the color to the left of the pencil, just to kind of deepen that shadow. Because there are more pencils than colors in my rainbow, I do need to go ahead and color another one in using that mauve ink. So I do the same process to color that in, again trying to have a shadow there to the left of each pencil. Once both of the red pencils were colored in, I then brought in the orange and I used the same technique for two more pencils. Now you might be wondering why I'm using the ink spots or ink cubes to color in my image and not my favorite color medium, my real brush pens. Honestly, I just thought while I had my ink cubes out, I would use these and maybe show you a new technique just to let you know that your inks aren't always just for stamping. 
I continued to color the pencils until I was left with the purple. Now because I did want the purple to be a little bit more muted to match the rest of the pencils, I did add a little more water to this color before bringing it to my circle. Now I do have to go back in and add some more dark to deepen it, but I think this made it look nice and uniform with the rest of the colors. Once I had all of that coloring done, I cleaned off my brush on the paper towel and then I just used that to wipe off that scrap of clear cardstock. And now I'll be able to use this clear cardstock again for another paint palette. Because the stencils I bought don't fill an entire card front, I did need to bring in my trimmer and cut down my stenciled piece. I want those bubbles to bleed on the top and bottom, so I cut that to four and a half inches tall. Because of that, so I would have even borders on my card front, I cut this piece down to three and a quarter inches wide. Now I did end up cutting off a lot of my red and purple. Next time I would probably go ahead and cut this down first before I stenciled it. Next, I brought in a scrap of black cardstock to cut down for the mat for my stenciled piece. I thought the black would be a nice definition between the stenciled piece and my white card base, and then it pulls in the cardstock from the sentiment. This was cut down to four and three quarters inches tall by three and a half inches wide. I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer to cut down my sentiment. I find that this is easier for little pieces like this. I can get it a little bit more exact by matching or lining it up with lines on that plastic guard. Now that all of the pieces were ready, I could start putting my card together. The first thing I did was adhere my stenciled piece to my black mat, and then those got placed on the front center of the card base. Then I brought in my die cut pieces and added some adhesive to the vellum and placed that toward the top center of the card. Now later that adhesive on that vellum will be hidden by my pencil piece. I brought back in my little trimmer and I cut off the excess on each end of my sentiment strips. At this point, I still didn't really know what I wanted my focal point to look like, so I temporarily put that onto the vellum, and then I started playing around with my sentiments. I moved those around, putting them together and putting them apart, and then I decided finally kind of what I wanted that to look like. I removed that temporary adhesive from the back of my pencil piece, and then I brought in my ATG again and added adhesive to both halves of my sentiment. Once those were in place, it was time to get this put on the card front, and I wanted a little dimension, so I brought in one of my big blue rolls of foam tape. I shared about this recently in my Crafty Must Haves video. If you did miss that series, I will link it in the description box below. I shared some of my crafty items that I couldn't live or craft without. I hope you'll check those out if you haven't already. I did add three strips of this to the back of my focal point, making sure to overlap where the black cardstock hung off the circle, and then I pulled that release tape and got that put onto my card front. I decided that I couldn't call this card finish until I had a little bit of sparkle. I brought in some clear holographic sequins, as well as some glue dots that I had left over from previous month's paper pumpkin kits. I placed five of these glue dots, just kind of spread from the top left to bottom right of my card front, and then I put a sequin on each one of those. A couple of the sequins did get tucked kind of underneath my focal point, just to add a little more interest. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go check out Marla's video. Once again, it's linked at the top of the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. 
thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.